Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we just give you praise today in this Shabbat meeting, the first one that we are doing at the Embassy of the United Nations for Israel in Mevaseret Zion at the western gate of Jerusalem, overlooking this wonderful view in this absolutely special house that you've given us to set up for the purpose of your glory right here at the gates. We are right at the gates. And it's very interesting that as we have arrived to this place, we can see that the parasha of this week, the Torah portion of this week, is actually all about the gates. And it's about the authority of Yahweh at the gates. And we're going to read right now uh, from Deuteronomy 16, verse 18, where it says, Judges and officers you are to appoint within all your gates that Adonai your Elohim is given you, according to your tribes. <laughs> and they are to judge the people with righteous judgment. You are not to twist justice. You must not show partiality or take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and distorts the words of the righteous. Tzedek, tzedek, tirdof, justice, justice, you must pursue so that you may live and possess the land that Yahweh your Elohim is giving you. You are not to plant for yourself an Asherah pole of any kind of wood beside the altar of Yahweh your Elohim that you make for yourself. Nor are you to set up a pillar for yourself. Yahweh your Elohim hates this. Isn't that amazing that even as we're coming here, we're basically coming under the mark of the parasha of Shoftim, or the parasha of the judges. As we came to this place, Royalisa, who is going to be the house manager on this place, um, pointed at the fact that there was a cup that she, she couldn't read the Hebrew handwriting. She didn't know what it said. But the cup had a woman on her knees. And it said, actually, the cup was a scripture from Judges 5, where it says, me, Deborah, and until me, Deborah, a mother in Israel arose. And that is the cup that was left here in the house, together with Deborah being one of those shoftim, one of those judges that were set up for Israel's sake to rule in Israel. And we are here at the gate, the place of the Shoftim, the place of the judges, the place where we're going to decree and declare some things that will impact all of Israel and all of the nations of the world because judges emit judgment. They proclaim things, they declare things, they lay down the law, and they, they have a fine balance between law and mercy. And this is what we're going to have at the gates of Jerusalem, that very special balance between law and mercy. The Torah, Yeshua, is the Torah made flesh, and that's where the mercy is. The mercy is in Yeshua, hallelujah, because it says the Torah came through Moshe, but uh, grace and mercy came through Yeshua HaMashiach. So we can see here a uniting of Torah and spirit, of the Torah and the mercy. If there was no need for mercy, then Yeshua would have not come. But there was a need for mercy and therefore he came. And therefore he's establishing us at the gates to be able to prophesy, to proclaim, just like Deborah. Deborah was a woman and she's the only woman judge in all of the book of Judges. And that cup of Deborah is in this place. Uh, of course, I am a kind of a Deborah. And many Deborahs will also come to join us here, but especially Ruth. This is going to be a very, very special place where Ruth joins Naomi and where uh, Deborahs arise and where Baraks come to take instructions from so that they can fight the battles, that they can fight whether it is in Israel, whether it is in the different nations of the world. And so we can see Yahweh really giving us a prophetic word already on this Shabbat concerning the importance of the place as a place of authority. Can you say with me authority? A place of authority. I've got with me right now Raya Lisa and Eha and Rabbi. Rabbi is already very, very tired. We've been traveling for 36 hours. We did sleep today, but he needed to rest some more. But we are... Uh, we are uh, myself, Archbishop Dominica Bierman here, Raya Lisa and Eha Lomus and uh, Rabbi Baruch Bierman. We are here in this place. Raya Lisa and Eha came earlier. Praise Yah they did because they could prepare for us. 
as we would come in, like you would be preparing for the Messiah to come in, so you need to clean house before he comes in. So they were doing exactly that prophetically before we came in, uh, bearing uh, the vision, the mission, the authority for the place, uh, the heart for the place. Then they were cleaning up and preparing. Uh, hallelujah. But it's a prophetic picture of what is going to happen through this house at the gates of Jerusalem, because I believe it's going to be cleaning the house of the Messiah, both in Israel and in the nations, so that Yeshua can return and he can be received and welcomed with Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai. And now very often, Yahweh chooses people to rule, to reign, to, uh, to prepare that maybe they don't feel so strong for the task ahead, but I want to tell you that Yahweh said, in my weakness, you are made strong. That's what the Apostle Paul used to say, in my weakness, he is made strong. And we can all attest to the fact that everything that we're starting here at the gates of Jerusalem, we are starting not in our strength necessarily, but in our weakness. And it is in that place that he's made strong. You know why? Because if we are all strong and we don't need anything, then he can't get glorified. But if we know and are aware that we are weak, then he can be made strong. If we are aware that we are needy, then he can provide. Hallelujah. If we are aware of the need of cleansing, then he can cleanse. And so we are very excited because... Uh, also, as we were doing our worship before we, I opened the, you know, the audio, the speaker for, um, for taping this, this particular meeting, the first meeting of Shabbat here, we were doing some wonderful worship. And I want to tell you that the word came to me saying, rejuvenation. And that this place is going to be a place of rejuvenation, a place where people are going to come and maybe with hopes, dash, and dreams will be rejuvenated. Hopes will be rejuvenated. Bodies will be rejuvenated. Souls will be rejuvenated. Spiritual walk with Yeshua will be rejuvenated. People that thought, oh, well, you know, I'm old, there's nothing. Nah, 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 nah. They will be rejuvenated in this place. There will be ra'ananim in Hebrew, which means fresh. Young again in the house of Adonai, in the house of Yahweh. So this is a prophetic word directly given by the Holy Spirit. In fact, the first prophetic word given before we opened the parasha was the word of rejuvenation. Then we opened the parasha and we saw that Yahweh would establish officers and judges at the gates, people of authority. And therefore, beloved delegates of the United Nations for Israel, we have one of the delegates with us, the delegate from Estonia, the first one to arrive and to even help prepare the place that Ehal Ormus, and, um, and she will attest to that, that this is the place where the delegates need to come and go from and the members need to come and go from because every time that you will come here, you will receive a bigger vision, a stronger heart for the whole mission and the ability to actually fulfill it because this is a place of rejuvenation and it's a place of authority. Authority. And therefore, people that want to obtain the authority necessary to walk this road, to run this road, to run this marathon, that actually Ea has run a marathon in the Negev, but now she only realizes that she's starting a marathon. But it's not only that physical marathon, but that spiritual marathon of opening the gates of Jerusalem for the King of Glory to come in. Hallelujah. And of connecting her nation, Estonia, to Israel and connecting everyone, every delegate, every member that comes will have, we will be able to come here and refuel. Can you say refuel with me? Refuel, refuel with authority, with vision, with mission, with inspiration, with a prophetic word, with revelation, with joy, with health, Amen. with wholeness, with well being to be able to run this race called the United Nations. For Israel. I want to inspire you because I want to tell you that this is not going to be a hotel. This is the center of the United Nations for Israel in Israel. And we're going to have a couple of rooms available for members coming and going from this place, for delegates coming and going from this place, that they will be able to stay here, uh, giving a very low cost offering, and they will be able to, to have. And they, if, if I would take you, and I'm doing it on audio right now because I wasn't prepared for a Facebook Live yet, uh, even though uh, we will do many Facebook Lives from this place and we will do many broadcasts from this place, it lends itself to it. 
that I wanted you to have at least the understanding of what's going on every corner in this very amazing house. That It's actually a house with character. It's an old type Jerusalem house. It's not one of those new modern uppity duppity houses. It's an old house with character, um, w- with a message. It's a house with a message. It's got arches everywhere. It's got visions from a- views from everywhere. If it's the inner patio, if it's the outside balcony towards the view of Jerusalem, of the mountains of Jerusalem, of the valleys of, of, uh, of Israel, all the way from Tel Aviv to the Dead Sea. I mean, it's got an ample view from the balconies. It also has so many corners. It has roof corners and it has garden corners and it has balcony corners and corners in the house and doors coming in and doors going out. Where about people that come here can always find a corner where they can be alone and pray. They can be alone and read the word. They can meditate on the scriptures. There's so many corners in this place. At the same time, because there's so many arches, so many windows, it's a place that's kind of like transparent in the sense that you know, like we need to become, we need to become transparent. We need to become people that if people look into us, they will find purity. They will find holiness. They will find righteousness, the right motivation of heart. And so there is a prophetic message that is coming from this house, the way that it was architecturally built. Now, for those that do not know, this house was built for a wedding. It was built for the marriage of the biggest garden architecture of its time in Israel, Mr. Yahalom, Mr. Diamond. The name is Diamond, yes. And it was, and then the other um, architect, I don't know his name yet, but I will investigate a little bit further. The, then at the same time that there was the biggest architect of gardens in Israel, um, I think probably would have been about 30 years ago, there was also the biggest architect of Israel at the time, and the daughter and the son of both architects were getting married, and they built their house for them, for their marriage, for their wedding. It was a gift to their children. So they made something that you can't find. This is not a type of a house that you can find cookie cutter anywhere, because there is not another house like this. So it has an inside patio with a garden. I have never seen in Israel an inside patio with a garden inside of a house. I'm not saying they don't exist, but if they do exist, they're small little patios. This goes for how many stories? Like three or four stories high, all the way from the ground floor to the roof, the patio goes. And then it's got gardens and balconies and little corners where you can sit down with your lover and talk to to your lover and put a little bench. So this place lends itself for a retreat. It lends itself for a retreat. And because we have at this point really... Uh, only uh, there's only five bedrooms in the place and already three are taken by the staff. Two bedrooms are going to be made available for people, especially I want to make an emphasis here because we don't really want this to be a hotel. We want this to be the house of the United Nations for Israel, members and delegates. The other people that are not, they can find hotels in town wherever they go. But at least you know that there will be two bedrooms. One of them is like more of a dormitory bedroom with its own bathroom. It will have about four beds in there and it has a view of the whole patio from top. I mean, gorgeous. You just look outside of the window of your bedroom and you see the whole patio of the house with the rocks formation and, and, the, and the plants and the flowers and everything that will be in that patio once we finish decorating it light or whatever we will put in there. And then there is another bedroom that is a smaller bedroom only for two people, maybe a couple, maybe two people, just overlooking the view with a balcony, overlooking all of the view of Jerusalem. So... At a time, besides the staff that is here, that is four more people, at a time we're going to have six guests can be here and f- about four staff maximum. And that means that up to 10 people can be here. And even that 10 number is pretty prophetic because it says that, uh, hallelujah, you cannot even start a minyan without 10 people in a synagogue, right? And where are 10 righteous, then judgment can be averted. Hallelujah. And even though Rabbi and I will not be here all the time, we are going to be here pretty often. In fact, we're going to be here for all of the feasts, for all of the Hagim. And there will be all the Moadim. And there will be here uh, conferences going on in this place. Every feast that comes, expect it. 
because we're going to have a Passover Seder in the place. We're going to have a Shavuot meeting. We're going to have Sukkah when the Sukkot comes and you come to dedicate those that are coming. Hallelujah. You're going to have a Sukkah right here in the balcony. We're going to put a big, big Sukkah overlooking the view. We're not going to obstruct the view, but we're still going to put a Sukkah. Uh, Sukkot is going to be celebrated here. Shabbat will be celebrated here. Rosh Chodesh will be celebrated here. Everything. And so, hallelujah, you know that you've got a house at the gates of Jerusalem, the place where it's a place of authority. And therefore, it's so important that we guard it. We guard it with purity, with holiness, with righteousness, so that we can all have the authority authority to pronounce Yahweh's word in this place, to decree what needs to be done. If it's judgment, if it's mercy, if it is a prophetic word of hope and encouragement, if it is a prophetic word of rebuke, but we need to have this place as an open gate of heaven. And this is what is going to be. I wanted to be very inspired because I believe that many of you will be coming and going from your nations to this place. This is going to be your house at the hills of Jerusalem, at the gates of Jerusalem. Yes, we know it is Yah's house, and it is my house. I mean, my name is on the contract, and Rabbi's name is on the contract of this place, but it is your house because we are your spiritual parents and mentors, and therefore it is also your house. It's our grand, amazing, awesome United Nations for Israel family house in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. This is totally amazing, totally awesome, totally exciting. Let me tell you that I haven't been this excited in many, many, many years. In Hebrew, we say, Pam Shlishit Glida, the third time it's an ice cream. This is the third time we're sent to Mevaseratzion. The first, Mevaseratzion, by the way, is um, based on the scripture in Isaiah 40, verse 9, when it says, you female preacher, female evangelist, female preacher, female proclaimer of good tidings, of good news, of prophetess to Israel, say to the cities of Judah, behold your Elohim. Behold means look at us. Here is your Elohim. And this is exactly what we are going to be doing from this place is we, because of the glory here, because of the people coming and going, because of the love oozing for a, an ecclesia, for a kehila like Ruth, uh, a kehila of nations, a congregation of nations that will be coming here, that will have their flags on the top of the roof and will be a kehila of Ruth. And then this, this Naomi will begin to rejoice because they will be able to see, behold your Elohim, behold your God. In other words, when they look up, we are going to be that city up on a hill that cannot be hidden. And that's what Yeshua said. He said, you are a city on a hill. Hallelujah. That cannot be hidden. And when you light up a lamp, you, you don't put it under a bushel basket to cover it, but you put it up there on the hill so everybody can see it. And this is exactly what this house is. It's up on the hill. It has a rooftop and it is overlooking a tremendous view of Jerusalem and the mountains of Jerusalem, actually all the way towards the roads towards Tel Aviv and, and all the way towards the Dead Sea. And this is a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. Now, this is the third time we've been sent here. The first time we came here, we had to leave this place because my daughter got so sick that I had to cater for her in the Sharon area. You all know the story. Seven hospitalizations, 15 years of walking uh, a psychiatric hospitals for the restoration of Adi. You all know that. So I left. Then we were sent back right after she managed to stand on her feet a little bit. And I had to forsake again my children in the Sharon Valley area and come and live in Mevaseret. And Yahweh gave us a bigger house, became bigger. It had three stories. It had a basement. It had a beautiful view. And, and then Yahweh said, you're packing and you're leaving to Eilat. And then we went to Eilat and we left Mevaseret. Very excited to go to Eilat, but a little bit heartbroken because we knew that Mevaseret Zion is actually the place that he gave us right from the beginning, from the moment that I got saved, from the moment that Rabbi and I got married. The place we came and went from was always Mevaseret Zion. So we knew Mevaseret Zion was the place, but yet Yahweh decided that he sent us to Eilat. Hallelujah. So we went to Eilat. Praise the living Yah. And in Eilat, we relinquished everything we were doing in Mevaseret, you see. We relinquished everything we were doing here. It was thriving. We relinquished it. And every time something had been thriving, Yahweh had asked me to relinquish it. Then the Elat prayer tower was thriving. Yahweh said to relinquish and go to St. Augustine, Florida, at the gate of America, to fight for the life and soul of America. And then, this is the third time. Say with me, third time. Yeah. 
being right. sent back to Mavasera. This time the house is even bigger. So every time we came back, the house was bigger. And now the house is bigger. And I believe it's connected with that. Obedience brings about prosperity. Obedience brings about enlargement of territory. And I believe that just like our houses have been bigger in Mevasera Zion, and this is the biggest we've had in Mevasera Zion since we've been sent here, that means that we have expanded territory. We're coming back already after a territory expansion. And the territory expansion is all of you. All of you in the nations, all of you delegates and members of the United Nations for Israel, you are the territorial expansion of, of, of Kadesh Mab Ministries and then the daughter of Kadesh Mab Ministries, the United Nations for Israel. Amen? So, hallelujah for that. This is our third time here. Every time, I remember the first time that I came here, I came heartbroken. The first apartment we had in Mevaseret, I was heartbroken. Because I came after my ex-husband committed suicide, and my kids were broken too. And I remember that arriving to this place, I had to set it up. Not this place, but the little condo that we had here. Um, we had to set it up so that the social workers would come and see that we had a place for my kids. Um, and they would even, you know, allow anything. So we didn't have any money. We didn't have any food. And I remember that the Christian Friends for Israel, they heard, no, the Bridges for Peace, they heard that we had come back to the land and that we had been missionaries throughout America, China, Indonesia, the Far East. And they said to us, you know, we want to bless you. We heard that you've come back, that you maybe you don't have any food and you've come back from the mission field. We want to bless you. I'll never forget them that. And they said, uh, we want to bring you a shipment of potatoes and eggs and, and, and different things so that you can have some food. And that was answered prayer for us. We exalted Yahweh and said, Lord, thank you so much that you heard our prayers. We didn't call them on that. They called us. And um, I remember that they brought the shipment and we were very thankful because we didn't have any. When I'm saying any food, I'm talking any food, zero food and zero money. So we didn't have money for the furniture. We didn't have money for anything. And I needed to furnish for my kids so that the social workers would see we have something. They won't say, oh, those crazy missionaries, they don't have anything. Right? They already knew we were missionaries. They already knew we were believers. And we wanted to, to leave a good impression. And let me tell you what happened. After the second shipment, I looked at Yah. I talked to Yeshua and I said this. Yahweh, you didn't bring us back to the land to be beggars. I am not going to take any more shipments from the Bridges for Peace, and it's not pride. I want to see your provision amply supplied. And do you know what I did? I went to the refrigerator, I laid my hands on it, and I commanded it to be filled with the best of food. That very same day, they called from the Bridges for Peace, and they said, Hello, Shalom, how are you, Mashlumchem? We are ready with your next shipment of food. And this is what I told them. Beloved brothers and sisters, you have been like an angel to us. Thank you so much for the food you brought us. But right now we are amply supplied. Our fridge is full of food. We have everything we need. And they were very silent on the other side of the line. They said, really? Mm. Oh, yes, I said. Yahweh has blessed us tremendously. He said, are you sure you don't want... No, we are perfectly fine. Thank you so much. Go give it to somebody that needs it. Well, they were wondering. And you know, that day, the Holy Spirit sent me to walk the Yaffa Street. I went to the Yaffa Street in Jerusalem and I walked. And he stopped me at Eged Tours, which used to do the day tours. I think they still do the day tours to different parts of Israel. And he told me, go in there and ask for a job. Now, I've been a missionary. I'm in full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. And I'm a tour guide. I've got four languages. And he said, go there and ask for a job. Now, Eget Tours pay half of any other tour company. With my credentials, I could get a job as a tour guide doing the two-week tour, the one-week tour, the 10-day tour, being paid wonderfully and having great tips and commissions. But he said, go in here and ask for a job. And I said, okay, fine, Lord. But if that is you, then I want them to tell me when I go in there... Where have you been? We've been waiting for you. And I went inside and I said, Hi, my name is Dominica Birman. I am a tour guide in Hebrew, Hebrew, Spanish, English, French. Take a peek. And they looked at me and said, Where have you been? Can you start tomorrow? And I said, Yes. And the following day, I did my first trip 
And it was a trip to the Galilee. And I came back with my pockets full of tips and commissions. And that very day, our fridge was filled with food and never got empty again. Hallelujah. Ah, Amen. Amen. So that's how, that's the way I came to the first place. But I'd asked from Yahweh and I said, Abba, I want you to give me a view. Whatever you give me, whatever house you give me, it's got to be a view. And we exactly got a condo in a place called Nof Harim, the view of the mountains. That's the name of the condo. So not only the view, but the name was view. And then that was our first and second house was in Nof Harim, near the mall in Mevaseret Zion. The mountain views, I always had the views. You have always answered me my prayer about the views. And now it's the cherry on the pie. This is the view. Hallelujah. We definitely have Nof Harim in here. We have the mountain view here. And we have a much even wider view than we've had in any other of the houses. And this is prophetic as well because our vision is wider with the United Nations for Israel. And it is a bigger place. It is a bigger place. Hallelujah. So, beloved ones, Yahweh knows, but this street is called Harazim, which means the oaks, the oak trees. It's connected with, uh, with uh, the trees of righteousness in Isaiah chapter 60. The oaks of, or the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh that he may be glorified. Uh, the tree is oaks, um, pines, uh, all kinds of words like that, but cedars, actually cedars like the cedars in Lebanon, but it's the same family. They are all of the same family. They're, they're all uh, one type of Eris or another Eris. Uh, like the cedars of Lebanon. Um, and so this is the name of the street. And beloved, I have a lot more to tell you, but I just wanted to send you a short message from here, encouraging you and welcoming you to your new home in the Holy Land, to your new home in Israel, your new home in Jerusalem, at the gates of Jerusalem, expressly set apart for the members and the delegates of the United Nations for Israel, and for those sympathizers that will come and will want to strengthen the work here. Bless you. We praise Yahweh for every one of you. Every dime that you have given is being put to good use. I want to also inspire you to give as much as you can this month, because if I would put the ladies here and they would tell you how much needs to be done here, the list would be very long. And both the furniture and stuff that we still need to buy into this place, setting up, the setting up of the flags and the banners. And truly, right now, I don't have all the money to do that, but I'm going to do it anyways, with or without money. You already know me that I don't get stopped because there is money or there is no money. I just proceed. I begin to do it and the money comes in. So I know that every one of you is going to be listening carefully, clearly, how much you're going to be donating this month. Yes, I know it's a sacrifice, but believe me, everything we're doing is a sacrifice. But the biggest, you know, these ladies yesterday, they were cleaning the stairs. They had, well, like four stories to clean and with water. And then Eha even sent a video out there. Some of you watched it. And they had to clean windows. They had to clean that. And, you know, Raya Lisa is uh, 17 going on 70. And uh, Eha is after her 50s, and, uh, and they were, you know, they just pulled out their sleeves and they rolled out and they sacrificed, they gave their, their strength for the purpose of Yahweh and this mission. And so, you know, whether it's your strength, whether it's your money, uh, whether it's your prayers, all of it is welcome. We need them all right now here. This mission is, is not for me only. I am the visionary, but truly you are the mission. So bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. And, uh, and so don't forget uh, to pass this on to all of the members of the United Nations for Israel. We even have a cat that just jumped over the fence that decided to come visit us. But we're not going to let the cat in, so we're going to tell him that he's not welcome. At this point, though, you may all be animal lovers. We don't want cats to be roaming around here. So we're going to do But it's, it's because it is so many gardens in this place and so much nature that, you know, it lends itself for that as well. But bless the living Yah right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that we declare your shalom, your holiness, your righteousness, your purity into the embassy of the United Nations for Israel, your blessing over every one of its members, every one of its delegates in the name of Yeshua. And all of those that have chosen to give, I bless you in advance. 
thousands and tens of thousands, the righteous of the nations that are given $100 a month uh, for the purpose of the embassy, those that are not yet signed up as the righteous of the nations are going to sign up now. We bless you too. Hallelujah. All those that have given, whether it's $20, 200 2000 or $2 million, we bless you in the name of Yeshua all the way from the mountains of Yerushalayim, from our brand new embassy that is being set up. Be praying for us because we have a lot to set up, very short time, and we need help. So go ahead and send the angels our way. <laughs> Bless you from Yerushalayim. Hallelujah. See you soon.